Hi everyone, Chef Aaliyah here again. I'm trying to figure out the lighting for today's video because I haven't done this yet during the day. And I got lots of backlight back here, so I'm trying to figure this out. I think you guys can see my cutting board. So today what I'm going to be talking about is how to cut fennel. And you can see in the description for this live video, um, I'm going to be making this really simple pear and fennel salad recipe that I just discovered recently um, out of this Bocadilla cookbook that was recommended to me that's all uh, from a restaurant in New York. And this cookbook's amazing and one of the recipes in it is this pear and fennel salad and this is my little take on it. So let's just get started with the fennel. I find uh, most people aren't really familiar with fennel unless you grew up eating it. Maybe you're a garden or you're Italian or of Italian heritage. I find a lot of people who are Italian um, know what fennel's about. But other than that, I haven't found a whole lot of people that know what to do with fennel and love using it. So if anybody there is watching, do, what do you do with fennel? Anything? Comment if you do anything with fennel. So here's my fennel here. I got two bulbs. I went to the farmer's market on Saturday and I bought two bulbs because um, they were kind of small. I usually prefer to buy one big one and I'll tell you why in a second. But today, uh, this time I bought two kind of, they're even small I would say. And the reason I like to buy the bigger ones is because um, you do have quite a bit of loss here. It depends, the core is inside of here which you are going to cut out. You can see the bottom of the core right there. And um, you do have quite a bit of loss when you cut into fennel here, so it's nice to start with a nice big bulb so you don't end up with nothing at the end of cutting the fennel, right? So here, let's talk through the anatomy of the fennel, shall we? <laughs> here you have your fennel. This is your fennel bulb, this white part here. These are your fennel stalks, these dark green things. It's growing in the ground like this, right? And this, if you ever see recipes here, this is fennel fronds. These are the parts they tell you often to add to your recipes because this is just like an herb, really. It's really tender. You can chop it up and put it in almost anything. A fennel is really good with fish, but also really good with a lot of things, potatoes, all kinds of stuff. Today, we're going to use the bulb for this recipe, and we're also going to use the fronds, which are this feathery bit here. These stalks tend to be kind of tougher. They need a longer cooking method. Um, they're really good for flavoring soups and stocks or if you're like simmering a fish or grilling a fish I would put them with the fish in order to get that flavor in there But you really need to cook these for a while and cut them super thin these stocks in order to get them to be edible I would think you could also pickle them. That's something I haven't tried yet I think that might be really delicious a pickled fennel stock, but for today. We're just going to use this bulb here and then some of the fronds. We won't even use all of the fronds because it's a ton in this cute little salad. So um, I'm just gonna cut off this stuff and put it aside for now. A lot of times when you buy fennel bulbs, say if you buy them in the grocery store, I've noticed that they often come trimmed already. So you might just find them like this. Sometimes they leave a little bit of the top on so you can get some of the fronds. I think it's kind of sad when you just get this and you don't get to take advantage of the fronds because the fronds are so, the feathery fronds are so good. So here's your bulb. I just cut the top off. And then I'm gonna take off any um, bits that are kind of brown. This, I rinse this, but there's still kind of some brown on it. So I'm just gonna peel off the outer layer. And you do that at your discretion. Hi, Jill, how are you? You do that at your discretion however you want. Um, However the fennel bulb looks. Sometimes they look really good and really clean and other times not. Jill, do you use fennel in, regularly when you cook? Or do you even like fennel? Some people really can't stand the, the licorice anise flavor. That's the other thing. Fennel has kind of a sweet licorice flavor, which I really, it's nice. It's a nice change. So we have our bulb. I've taken off the outer bit and I'm just going to cut it in half. So I've cut it in half crossways here, and you'll see that in there there's a core that you need to cut out. So that um, is tough, and you really want to get that out of there. Some fennel bulbs, it's super big. Others, this is actually a pretty small one, which is nice. There won't be as much loss on this. What do you do with your fennel, Jill? So I'm just going to cut that out with a triangle cut 
here. So I just took my knife and how was it? <laughs> like that and just did a little triangle cut to get it out of there. Ooh, fennel and grapefruit. Yeah, fennel's really good with um, citrus. The um, Jill says she does a fennel and grapefruit. It's really good with citrus. On this, I'm actually doing a lemon vinaigrette. So, yeah, I agree. Super yummy. So the other one I just took out too. So there's a little triangle cut. And for this recipe, I'm just going to thinly slice it across and end up with some um, thin slices here of the... More If the bulb is crunchy, I wouldn't call it tender, but you can definitely crunch on it. It's like celery as opposed to the stock, which you just can't get through. It's just too fibrous. So I'll trim a little bit of that off. And here's my salad bowl here. I'm just going to build the salad, just throw it all in there. Super simple. Oh, awesome, Joe. That was kind of my point at doing it at this time. I was hoping Monday lunch break would be a time people would be wanting to watch a live video because I've only done them in the evening. So that's good to hear. Thanks for that feedback. So other half of fennel, just thinly slice really quick. And you can do it as thin or as thick as you want. If you want to get fancy, you could do, um, use a mandolin or a, what's called a benrimer or a Japanese mandolin. If you want to do it super thin, you could do this. Sometimes this is really nice to use. But today I'm just using my extremely sharp knife. <laughs> and then I'll do the other bulb. So here's my other bulb. This one's got a bit of a mark on it there. I'm going to go ahead and take that off the outer bit. I get rid of a little bit. And then I'm going to trim the top and cut it in half and then get out that, this one has a bigger core in it. Get out that core here. And just thinly slice it through. So there you go. And last bit. See if you can find, if you don't shop at the farmer's market, see if you can find fennel in your grocery store. See if you can notice it next time you're there. I'm curious to see if they have, I never um, look for it in the grocery store, but I have, I have seen it now and again, but I think it's one of those things you might be able to find pretty easily. So we have our fennel all nicely sliced here, and then I'm going to just move on to the pear. So this is a fennel and pear salad, and I like to use, this is an Asian pear that I got at the market. Um, they're hard. So Asian pears are hard like an apple, even when they're ripe. So I really like to use them. They're so nice and crunchy in the salad. They have a sweet flavor, um, sometimes a little bit of a whiny flavor to them, like wine. Um, depends on the variety of Asian pear. There's a few different varieties. But this, you can use the Asian pear, which they're in season right now. They're not that hard to find. You can also use a bosque pear. A bosque pear tends to stay a bit firmer when ripe. You could also use regular pears, um, like a Bartlett or a Dan Dianju or what other varieties are there? But they kind of get softer when they're um, riper. And when they're unripe, they're a little bit uh, tannic and kind of unpleasant. So th these, they stay nice and hard when they actually are ripe and ready to eat. So I wanted to show you how I do, I core the pear here. I basically just cut around it. Instead of taking the core out of the middle, I just cut four sides around the core and just are left with my core. So I'm going to go one, then I have a flat surface, two, I'm going to flip it, three, and four. So then I end up with this nice core, which either can be munched on, or if you're doing this with an apple, you can actually freeze these and eventually make apple cider vinegar out of them. I haven't tried pear cider vinegar <laughs> yet. But now I'm with these four pieces of pear here. And then I can just thinly slice them. Nothing fancy, same kind of thing. If you want to do the pieces smaller, you can definitely cut the pear quarters in half. And so you can get smaller pieces. But I like to leave them nice and big. They're a similar shape to the fennel. And these Asian pears, God, they're so crunchy and juicy. And just, you don't have to be rid of the refreshing fruit just because summer is over and we don't have peaches anymore. 
These Asian pears are like one of my favorite things about fall. Absolutely. You might even, if you guys like persimmons, I'm not a huge persimmon fan, but if you're into persimmons, um, Fuyu persimmons also stay hard when ripe, and they would be a really delicious fruit to include in the salad of Fuyu persimmon. Hi, Shannon. Yeah, it, it's one of my favorite tricks for coring. It's really quick, and cores drive me crazy. I rarely use an actual corer, you know, the thing you stick in the piece of fruit. So just going around like that. And some people say you have a little bit of waste, but I don't think you have much more than you would otherwise. And you can totally <laughs> nibble on it. Good little snack. So just thinly slice the pear. And I'm using one medium-sized pear. Sometimes the pears can get super huge, the Asian pears. If that's the case, just use half of it. Or just have more a pear in your salad, that works too. So here I'm about half and half. I got like half pear, half fennel, yeah. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. No, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add the fronds right now. And you can add as little or as much fronds as you like. Again, these feathery things. I'm just gonna add a little bit for now and I'll go back and see if I want more. They have a slightly more pronounced fennel flavor than the bulbs do. Obviously less crunch, but you can totally up to you on that. And it's a nice visual too, because it's the dark green against the lighter colors. So as much or as little as you want. The recipe, if you guys have taken a look at that too, it actually includes basil in it. I don't have any on hand right now, but if you had some basil, that's also really good in this salad. I made it like that last time. Um, it's great. The basil goes along great with that fennel anise flavor, so it's perfect. But if you don't have it, it's totally fine too. It was just a very little amount. So I'm going to move on to the dressing. It's a lemon vinaigrette. Really easy to make in about five minutes. If I can find my garlic clove. Where's my garlic clove? One garlic clove. Because you don't want it to be super overpowering raw garlic flavor, but you do want it to have a little bit of flavor too. Um, so I just use one, it's like the medium sized clove here. And I use my microplane to get it really small. You can also do this in the blender as well. And just whir everything together so that garlic just blends into everything, but blending on camera isn't that exciting, it's pretty loud. So I decided to just do it by hand. And I grate my garlic so I get more of a garlic paste. That's what I really like when I do my dressings. And then I use actually two types of acid in this um, dressing. I use an apple cider vinegar, which has a nice a uh, strong flavor, but also like a sweetness in the background because of the apple. And then I'll use lemon too, which is a citrus. I think you could use orange in this would be really delicious. Grapefruit, like Joe was saying. Grapefruit juice would be really good. And I'm just gonna do, the recipe's there on the website at agoodcarrot.com, but I'm just eyeballing this. And when I eyeball dressings, I do about two parts oil to one part vinegar, or what I call an acid, or what is called an acid. Um, and different people have different preferences for how much acid they like in their dressing. I like things a little bit more acidic, so I'll do a two to one. Um, what you can also do is a three to one, so three parts oil to two parts vinegar or acid. So if you're not making your salad dressings at home already, this is a really nice basic one to have under your belt. So probably about, what does the recipe say? Should I follow the recipe? <laughs> Let's see, I got my laptop right here. It says, um, I think a couple tablespoons of lemon juice and just one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Okay. Who knows what I'm thinking when I make a recipe? I got this, like I was saying, from the Book of Cookbook, but I put my little twist on it. I think they used white wine vinegar. I used apple cider because that's what I had on hand. So I just added a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there. Can you see this? And then I'm going to put in a little bit of sweetener. In this case, it's going to be honey. I was emptying my, my honey jar, you know, as the 
you get down to the bottom of the honey jar, it's like impossible to get out of there. So I'm doing maybe about a tablespoon of honey in there. And I'll whisk that to get the honey dissolved. And a little bit of salt, of course, always salt. So I'm going to whisk all that and make sure that honey is dissolved before I add um, the olive oil. And I think that's it, yeah. And then I'm going to add the olive oil, just a little bit of eyeball in here. And I'll add it as I whisk the oil, as I whisk the vinegar, because it helps it emulsify better if you're whisking it. But you don't have to whisk it at the same time. That's the other thing about doing it in a blender is that it emulsifies really nicely and you end up with kind of a creamy dressing. If you do it this way, not as creamy, like not as emulsified, meaning not as homogenous. If you do it in the blender, it's this nice pale yellow homogenous mixture. This is going to be a separate mixture. I can kind of see the oil still separate from the vinegar. And to taste your dressing, you always want to take whatever you're going to be eating it with, be it lettuce, a pear, <laughs> and you want to dip it in the dressing. Because you want to know what it's going to taste like on the thing you're eating, right? I mean, you can taste it and be like, sure, that tastes great. But you have no reference point. If you taste it on the thing that you're going to eat it on, then you know how it's going to taste on the thing that you're eating it on. I need more oil. I like things vinegary and that's too vinegary for me. No more oil. I taste it on a pear. This time I will taste it on a piece of fennel. See how it's doing. Let's see. Mm, where's a little piece of fennel? I'll dip it in there. Mmm, that's good. Just a little bit acidic. Um, yeah, it's perfect. It has a perfect amount of salt, a little bit of garlic in there. Some people like might put a little more sweetener in it. I'm not going to put more sweetener. I like it like this. Not as sweet. I don't like things very sweet. I do not have a sweet tooth. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pour this over the salad. And I like to do this right away because the um, pear and the fennel have a tendency to brown if you leave them out for a long time. So with this, you can just go ahead and dump over the dressing. And this salad actually holds up really well. Last time I made it, I made it last week. Where's my spoons? I made the salad last week and it held up for two or three days in the refrigerator, like no browning, still crunchy, it was amazing. And that's when I decided actually to do it for the blog and for this demo because it's just such a delicious salad. It's crunchy. If you're like fatigued from green salads, this is a really nice switching it up. Or you can also add greens to this salad too. That would be amazing if you wanted to add greens to this. This is just this. Plus, and I'm not going to demo this bit, but in the recipe itself you actually fry some walnuts in olive oil, which how Delicious is that, amazing. I actually already have some roasted walnuts on hand that I do not want to continue to toast. So I will um, just go ahead and pour those in, a few walnuts. And then the other thing that would go in the salad that um, I do not have on hand today, but it's delicious, is some manchego cheese. So manchego is a Spanish cheese and it can be aged anywhere from not very long to a really long time. And it adds a nice salty, pungent flavor to the salad too. Um, so give that a try. So I hope you learned a little bit of something about cutting fennel. It's been about 20 minutes. That's my 20 minute lunch demo. I hope you guys uh, give this fennel and pear salad a try. The recipe is on my website at agoodcarrot.com. And thanks everyone for stopping by. All right, bye.